Therefore, there's no substitute for purpose. What I'm saying is so important. This is more important than anything that you can hear right now. Because there's so many people who are lost, frustrated, and saved. There is no substitute for purpose. I was thinking of an example, and there's so many of them. Have you ever seen a manufacturer who began to build something, and because it didn't become what he intended, he made it something else? You don't see that. You don't. Check it. They don't stop until they get what they purposed. Hmm. There's no substitute for purpose. You cannot make a car a boat. You can't decide, I'm tired driving this car, I'm going to drive it into the water and I'll make it a boat. You just can't do that. <laughs> you can't substitute the purpose for the product. You cannot make a microphone a cooking spoon. I mean, you could, but it'll be microphone abuse. <laughs> you may laugh, but it's true about your life. If you are becoming something, or can I say, trying to become something that you are not, you are abusing who you are. There's no substitute for purpose. There is no satisfaction beside purpose. Purpose and only purpose will satisfy. Purpose, therefore, will haunt you. That's why God uses the word prevail. He says no matter what you plan, whether it's big, good, fantastic, evil, bad, or excellent, if it's not my purpose for your life, God says, my purpose will prevail over that plan. That word prevail means it will haunt you. If you did everything everybody wanted you to do, but not what you were born to do, then what you were born to do will haunt what you did. You got to understand God's word here. He says, my purpose will override, overrule all of your plans. No matter how good they are, no matter how big they are, purpose will frustrate your success. You know people, maybe you are one of them. I mean, you know everyone thinks you're doing well. But when you close the door at night and cut the light off, it's hell in the bed. You cry, you weep, you're mad because you don't feel fulfilled. And then when you go on stage, everybody claps. But in secret, you are depressed. They think you are the best corporate executive in the whole company. But deep inside, you really want to go preach. <laughs> deep inside, you really want to go paint pictures. Deep inside, you want to do photography. You don't want to sit at no desk. Whatever your gift is, whatever your purpose is, it will make you frustrated. It will prevail over all of your success. Why? Because purpose itself will overrule your accomplishments. Purpose will overshadow all your work. Purpose will depress your impressions. You impress people, but you're depressed. Because deep inside, you're not doing what you were born to do. God says, this purpose will make you sick. My purpose will haunt you. It will make you feel so frustrated that no matter how successful the world thinks you are, my deep calling purpose will make you sick. And some of you know what I'm talking about. 
You work 30 years, 40 years for a company, and all they give you is a watch. <laughs> and now that you're retired, you really want to get on with your purpose now. <laughs> Wasted all those years. Purpose will frustrate you. Nothing but nothing can take the place of purpose. Purpose is the key and the measure of success. You are only successful if you did what you were born to do. Everything else is failure. So you only measure your purpose, your success rather, by your assignment. If I told you to paint the wall over here and you paint that one, beautiful, perfect, excellent, you still failed. That's why it's possible to be good but wrong. To do a good thing but not the right thing. <laughs> Purpose is the right thing. It's not just a good thing. Purpose is that which you were sent here to perform. Purpose is the end for which you began. Let me say, we're going to pick up here tomorrow. But purpose is destination. Make a note of that. Purpose is destination. And destination is destiny. Purpose is your end that is set. And then God backs you up to begin it. Therefore, you began because there's something that's already finished that you were supposed to start. Therefore, your birth was caused because of your destiny. Your existence became necessary because of your destiny. So you don't go to your destiny. Destiny is pulling you. That's why when you go off course, there's something constantly pulling you back. No matter where you go in life, there's something that keeps on pulling you because destiny screams at you every moment of your day it quietly screams it's the loudest silence you can ever hear it's your destiny you hear it even tonight there's something even while I'm talking it's probably crying louder now because I'm talking about it. Yes. It's screaming. It's that thing that is already established by God. That you arrived to fulfill. And no matter where you go, what you do, it haunts you. It prevails. It overpowers you try to drown it in busyness, but it's too strong. You try to bury it in your preoccupation, but it is your occupation. That's why <laughs> until you find your destiny, all you have is a job. Tomorrow we will learn that your destiny is not a job. Amen. Your destiny is your work. Amen. Your job is what you do until you find your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bow your heads with me. Just remain steady. The Holy Spirit is here tonight 
and he hears your cry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you said that not even a bird falls from the sky that you do not know about. Even the sparrow that was thrown in free by the salesman, you know about him. The one that is considered worth less, you know about it. How much more valuable are we than these sparrows? Oh God, we're tired of existing. We're tired of even going through the motions. Worship. Rituals. Help us to know that you gave to the body apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That they may train the people for the work of their ministry. Not to keep church filled with people, but to help people discover and to release them to do their destiny. Father, there may be those among us tonight who came to this meeting because you drew them by your spirit, because they are crying out for meaning purpose in life Father let them hear your loving voice tonight come home come home to the Father for the Father knows why he created you Father those here tonight who, who came to you but did not come all the way to their destiny. Let this week, this entire week, be the week that was the pivot of their lives, where they stopped wasting time and they started investing time in their lives. We pray right now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would do what it was sent to earth to do. And that is to give us dreams and visions again. To let us see things that are in the unseen. To tap into that eternity that we know is crying on the inside. And help us to see it clearly. For no man knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of a man. Even so, no man knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We need your Holy Spirit, Father. Not just to shout, to dance, to sing, and, and to have thrills. We need the Holy Spirit to show us our vision again and our dreams for our lives. For this purpose, he comes upon flesh. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, speak to every heart. And let there be a yes to what you are saying, what you've been saying all these years. Let us say yes to it, Father. Put your heads bowed and think about your life. Look back at it and ask yourself the question, what have I done in the last 10 years, 15, 20? What do I have to show the unborn children that are yet to come that I have left for them? If you are here tonight and you don't, have a relationship with the manufacturer, the one who created you, who gave you life, 
for that purpose and destiny in his mind, then the first thing that you need to do is reestablish your relationship with him. That's why you come to God. Not to be religious, not to join some church organization. You come back to God so you can discover yourself. Discover why you were born. I want to pray specifically for those people here tonight who want to reestablish that relationship with God tonight before we leave this place. And if that's your desire, you want to stop living your life aimlessly, you want to make sure that you are in touch with your future, with your destiny, I want to encourage you right now to stand up on your feet and say, Brother Miles, pray for me. I want to reestablish my relationship with God tonight. But you do it very quickly right now. If that's your desire, you want to know God, you want to come.